One of the nice things about living in Florida and something I'm going to miss is you can go swimming about nine to ten months out of the year. Up here in the great state of Ohio, you're lucky to get three or four. It's a luxury I wish I would have taken advantage more of, but now that I think about it, I may have had a good reason, because you never know when your pool is haunted. Like today's movie, Night Swim. I have to say, I like the way Bloomhouse does business. They release so many movies with tiny budgets on their umbrella and count on just one of them being a hit to bankroll the next round of movies. I imagine aspiring filmmakers go to Jason Bloom and he just smiles and hands them 50 money and six months later it's in theaters. Last year they released about one movie a month, but for every one conjuring, they get about 50 fire starters. I mean, look at their filmography. There are a lot of movies, many with unique and weird premises, but none of a stranger premise than Night Swim. Like most horror movies, the movie tries to start with a bang. In the 1990s, a young girl makes her way to the pool only to be drowned in probably the movie's scariest moment. Fast forward today and we meet the Waller family. The father, Ray, was a former baseball player who was diagnosed with MS. After the family moved into their new house, Ray started swimming and suddenly he realized the pool was healing him. A deep cut miraculously healed without a scar, and his disease started to disappear. Naturally, he's pleased as punch at this development, and the weird goings-on don't seem to bother him because the pool has got its claws in him. From there, it's standard horror movie fare where Ray starts acting more and more unhinged while the mother tries to get to the bottom of why their pool is haunted. I mean, it's a movie about a haunted pool. I cannot stress this enough. That is probably the absolute best storyline you can make on the subject, but it's still kind of meh. I appreciate the effort, don't get me wrong. I can think of a whole bunch of people who complain about no originality in Hollywood anymore, and then they service up a haunted pool on a platter. The premise sounds like something you'd see on Mystery Science Theater 3000, but you still can't say the idea isn't original. In a movie like this, where the obvious way to fight the evil is to just not go swimming, they have to find ways to pad it out. They do that by making everyone make the worst possible decisions at all times. I've talked about bad decisions in horror movies a lot, but in this movie, until the very end, every single person makes the dumbest decision at every single opportunity. I mean, it's not like in Halloween Ends where the bad decisions are infuriating. This one is more like, yeah, I mean, I guess they gotta keep the plot going somehow. The most egregious example is when the daughter, Izzy, is playing Marco Polo with a guy she likes. Spooky stuff keeps happening in the middle of the game, and suddenly the teen stops responding to her. Despite the noises and scary things going on, she keeps her eyes closed to the entire thing. Like, absolutely no one wouldn't have looked to see what was going on. But she keeps them closed for no other reason than some more spooky things can happen, and so the movie could continue. Did I mention this is a movie about a haunted pool? Think about that for a second. The fact that it got greenlit and turned into a full-length movie is impressive in itself. And despite everything working against it, it's not terrible. The acting is good, I really like the main character played by Wyatt Russell, and I hope he starts appearing in more things that aren't MCU related so I have a reason to watch him. Some of the spooky stuff is effective, and I like how the camera plays around with perspectives by going under and above the water. The movie did manage to unnerve me multiple times, and some of the jump scares were pretty good. The monster, or whatever it was, looked cool when the view was obstructed, but I didn't care for it when you got a good look at it. I also saw the shots where someone would be submerged, and then they could see someone standing on the edge of the water looking at them but when they'd surface, there'd be nothing there. It happens multiple times, and they're all good, but the first time is legitimately frightening. For a movie about a haunted pool, did I mention that already? It's pretty good. I doubt I'll ever watch it again, but it's fine for what it was. It has some scary moments, boneheaded decisions, and a likable enough cast. But I mean, it's a movie about a haunted pool. Five and a half Dr. Chainsaws. <laughs>